Ladies and gentlemen, um, good morning again. Uh, Alex has, uh, has been described. Um, she's had to go to Bucharest on a, uh, a business trip. Um, we'll have discussions about that on her return <laughs> from Romania. Um, but my, my apologies that you got me instead. This is the context. Uh, I'm afraid that most of those elements will not be um, very clear. But this is the see the, the context in which this next session is taking place. It's a very active part of the world in which we, and I'm sure all of you, are seeing increasing levels of activity and enthusiasm with uh, dynamic markets and regulators and legal systems which are uh, ever more uh, responsive to uh, the demands for international investment. Um, my my talk is focused on Kazakhstan, um, clearly a very important jurisdiction, not the only one in Central Asia by any means. We'll hear more about other jurisdictions um, following um, my, my presentation. Uh, Kazakhstan has had a long history of mining since at least the time of Catherine the Great in the 18th century, and I believe actually pretty much earlier than that. Um, it has an abundant supply of accessible, uh, accessible mineral and fossil resources and is in the global top 10 for uranium, number one or two for uranium, chromium, lead, zinc, manganese, copper, iron and gold, and also has substantial deposits of phosphate. It has one of the world's largest proven resources of uh, both petroleum and natural gas, and refineries uh, at Aktau, Pavodar and Shinkent. My focus this morning is on mining, but Petrochemicals and uh, hydrocarbons are clearly an equally important part of Kazakhstan's very strong natural resources base. Clearly many local and international mining groups are active in, in Kazakhstan and hopefully the changes which I will be uh, describing during the course of the presentation will assist in the encouragement of additional investors into the country. The Belt and Road, former Silk Road initiative uh, was originally proposed by President Xi uh, during a trip to Kazakhstan in 2013, the first year he took office, and its momentum has grown from that, um, and it is now enshrined in the Constitution. And the general view, I think, is that for Central Asia generally, uh, and also perhaps particularly for Kazakhstan initially at least, there is significant potential for uh, the Belt and Road to uh, enhance activity. Um, clearly, the infrastructure projects such as the, the roads and rail lines uh, will be really an uh, important part of that across Central Asia uh, generally. Uh, one of the early examples of implementation um, is the port of uh, Ling Huang Huang in Jingsu in China, which was jointly built by China and, and Kazakhstan. And the terminal is considered a key platform for the transportation of goods from Central Asia to overseas markets. And this is a very early stage in say, <coughs> Belt and Road, the, 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 roll, the roads and rails which, rail systems which are going to be structured, including, uh, I believe, the uh, right of the way across, uh, as it were, horizontally across circulation to be an important part of this. Uh, China is reporting, uh, planning a $150 billion investment by ver in various high-speed railway projects linking China to Turkey, via, via Kazakhstan, Turkmenistan, and Iran. Clearly, it's going to change the, the dynamics and the infrastructure of this area enormously. The head of asset privatization restructuring at uh, Samrat Kusina I said the implementation of the Belt and Road related plans is expected uh, to be faster than in other participating countries due to substantial synergies with the uh, newly dissolved, forgive me my pronunciation on that, program introduced by President Nazarbayev uh, quite recently. Attracting international investment into the mining sector is, of course, the background to the mining code's development. Um, in his uh, 2014 Kazakhstan's way, 2015, one goal, one interest, one future, the mining sector was recognized uh, to be 
fundamental uh, to Kazakhstan's economy, but lacking in foreign investment. Again, as you can see on the screen, um, Kazakhstan's subsoil regulations continue to be a major impediment for the country's mining industry to grow and attract foreign investment, although minor changes have already been uh, implemented. Uh, the current regulations are still cumbersome and need upgrading. Um, in 2014, lawmakers put forth an ambitious plan to bring Kazakhstan's subsoil regulations into line with other international mining jurisdictions. That was a publication in 2015 and is the, is, is the context in which the mining code has been developed. There were some changes introduced early in, in the process in 2014, but it has been uh, continuing. And I'll come on to the detail in a second. It's been a very much a Kazakh few days in London. Um, there was a very large Kazakh uh, group in London last week, and part of the, uh, the, the discussions relate to the Astana International Financial Centre, in which we have some involvement, and other incentive programmes which are designed to encourage international investment. And for the, those of you who were lucky enough, uh, as, I, as I was, to go to Expo 2017, um, it was a remarkable uh, evidence of, of, of the technology and the, the planning and the aspirations for uh, Kazakhstan, of which uh, clearly mining is a fundamental part. The Mining Code has been in discussion since 2013 and has international input from both the mining industry and, and from lawyers, and the latest draft was published uh, this September. We've just had a, a conversation this morning with um, one of the local administrators of, of the implementation of the code, and uh, I'm assured that this current timetable is still up to date. Um, the lower house, the Brazilians, has approved the first reading, and there is now an opportunity for uh, further discussion before a second reading at the Majilis, then goes to the Senate, and if approved by the Senate, um, it will receive the presidential signature. That is all targeted uh, for this year, but there is a health warning about everything I'm going to say that this may still change. Um, the objectives won't, which are to consolidate, simplify, and thereby attract investment, but the detail of implementation uh, may well change. There have been various evolutions in the development of the, the Kazakh mining code, uh, and it has recently uh, been aligned with the hydrocarbons code, but that is in part going to change. The uranium and hydrocarbons regimes are going to become uh, separate um, from the, 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 the mining, mining structure. Uh, to date, most mining uh, awards have been by way of tender, but there is now going to be a greater focus on first come, first served, and companies which satisfy the eligibility criteria are not ruled out on specific grounds for rejection will have the ability to apply uh, for licenses, and they should get them if they, they satisfy the criteria quite what happens if they're competing um, applicants for the same area remains to, to be seen. But there is a right of appeal on decisions. Um, it will be a licensing regime um, for solid minerals and subsoil use contracts uh, for hydrocarbons and uranium. Subsoil use contracts are the structure at the moment. Um, the state right to compulsorily acquire, preempt the sale of product is in the future going to be limited to hydrocarbons and potentially uh, uranium, but not um, conventional minerals. Geological exploration survey will be able to be undertaken by any, anybody, and that will introduce a new form of, of um, licensing. Uh, to date, that has only been able to be performed uh, by the, the state. Uranium is uh, being dealt with separately. It's uh, the, the CAS atom prom. Uh, group uh, is, is one of the world's great uranium producers and the structure for uranium, at least because obviously of its political and other sensitivity, is more restricted than other hard metals. And it's likely that there will be production contracts transferable after two years, uh, but the code is silent on the detail of expiration rights and it is possible that the solid minerals regime will apply. The period for grant of licenses um, is changing a bit. Um, the new regime speaks to the general rule as currently an expiration for six years with one extension up to the same period and for production a 25-year 
uh, contract again with extension for the same duration and there may in some cases be uh, following through the same concept as currently for longer, longer periods. The investment preferences, tax breaks and so forth are uh, still under development and one of the reasons for potentially delayed implementation of the new code will be getting the tax code aligned um, with that. There will be um, progressive lease payments and new categories of costs. Again, that element of the regime remains uh, to, be, to be published. The general context is to enable permitting and reporting um, to be simplified um, so that people can apply with hopefully short periods for application and less administration uh, in the process. But I, obviously without quality control restrictions, it will still be essential to ensure that the criteria are met and compliance with the ongoing obligations, uh, both those set out in the licenses and as a matter of law. Um, one of the areas which has been quite sensitive is the question of whether people can move automatically from a right of exploration to a right of um, production, of exploitation. There were some suggestions earlier in the year that this provision could fall away, and I think there was a lot of objection concerns with this from the mining industry, really, if one has spent a lot of money going through an exploration phase, simply getting some sort of comp compensation for expenditure uh, is not, not sufficient for that. But um, for most purposes, it should be possible, if you satisfy the criteria and are in compliance with the regulations, to move from an exploration license to an exploitation license. Currently, it's all within the same contracts as it will continue to be with a combined exploration and production contract um, for hydrocarbons. Um, the state priority to acquire rights will continue to apply um, for certain strategic and other deposits, as is the case at the moment. Uh, this regime was relaxed relatively recently, uh, and the, 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 the state waivers which um, previously existed, which were very little used, um, uh, have been cut back. They're still necessary to get consents um, for transfer of rights and interests um, for affected properties, both at the immediate level and at a higher level. And the uh, procedure for obtaining consent and waiver of priority rights is being uh, simplified. There is still a priority right for the state to acquire uh, the product, but that has been relatively limited in its, uh, in its application to date. So when will it happen? As I've mentioned, um, it should be signed into law, um, if not by the end of this year, within the first quarter of next year and should be effective within some six months after publication. However, there are transition periods with effectiveness of some other provisions being delayed, um, potentially for a quite extended period, with full implementation planned to occur by January uh, 2021. And as I mentioned, that's in part due to delays in the implementation of associated legislation and regulation. Existing contracts and licenses will be grandfathered as they have been in respect to previous changes of the law. So we're in a situation where a long-awaited mining code hopefully will reach the statute book by the end of this year and hopefully will make it easier um, for countries and for companies to apply, both domestic and international companies, to apply and exploit assets um, in uh, Kazakhstan. Um, and I hope this proves to be very, very successful. Thank you.